Sometimes life events transcend anything that happens on a baseball diamond between the white lines. One of those times came in the 1940 season for manager Bill McKechnie of the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds were in a pennant race and they had dropped two series late in the season. In early August, the Reds had dropped a series to the New York Giants, and then they dropped a double header to the Boston Bees. Cincinnati starting catcher Ernie Lombardi was out of the lineup with a sprained ankle and was going to be out indefinitely. He was replaced by Willard Hirschberger, a very fine backup catcher who was over a 300 here himself and even in 1938 threatened to be the starting catcher over Lombardi. Hirschberger was from um, Fullerton Union High School in California where he starred in baseball along with teammates Archie Vaughn and President Richard Nixon. After those losses in early August, Hirschberger thought that and told teammate Billy Werber that he thought that if Ernie Lombardi was in the lineup, they wouldn't have lost those games. He also went into Major McKechnie's office and explained to him that he thought he was the reason they lost the games and also talked about his father's suicide when he was 18 and said that he felt suicidal as well. McKechnie talked to him for a very long time and when he thought that Hershberger had calmed down considerably. Uh, Manager McKechnie thought he would be fine. The following afternoon, Hershberger did not report for batting practice. So the manager asked Gabe Paul, the traveling secretary, to report to Hershberger's hotel room and tell him that he wanted him to come to the game in street clothes anyway. Hirschberg agreed and said he would, but he missed the first game of the devil hitter anyhow. McKechnie was worried, asked Dan Cohen, a friend of Hirschberger's, to check up on him on at the hotel room. And when he went to the hotel room, he found that Willard Hirschberger had committed suicide. When the World Series came, um, the Reds were basically without a catcher because Early Lombardi had not healed well enough to play. He did pinch hit a few times in, in that series. But coach Jimmy Wilson, who had been retired for two years after the 1938 season when he, where he was player manager for the Philadelphia Phillies, hadn't played for two years and was 40 years old, came out of retirement to catch that World Series. He hit 353 and helped the Reds win the 1940 World Championship. The Cincinnati Reds voted his share of the World Series, $5,800, to go to his mother, Maude. three of the 1941 double elimination tournament. Today we have the Chicago Cubs at the Cincinnati Reds. Here's your starting lineups. Phil Cavaretta, Stringer, Hack, Nicholson, Dahlgren, D'Alessandro, McCullough, Sturgeon, and Passo pitching. Passo is a B with a Z modifier. For the Cincinnati Reds, we have Billy Werber, Mike McCormick, Frank McCormick, Ernie Lombardi, Harry Kraft, Jimmy Gleason, Lonnie Fry, Eddie Eust, and Bucky Walters. And Bucky Walters is a grade B YZ pitcher. Okay, let's play ball. And in the box steps, Phil Cavaretta. 54 is going to be a fly out to the right fielder. Mike McCormick, one down, 
Here is Lou Stringer, the second baseman for the Cubs. 51 is a single for Lou Stringer. Fast runner at first base. Stan Heck. Smiling Stan Heck. Someone once said that he had more friends than DeRocher had en enemies. Here's the pitch from Walters. 31 is going to be a single that beats out an infield hit. So runner's going to be on first and second for the Cubbies with one out. Bill Swish Nicholson. 24 is a swing and miss for a strike three. Two away. Here is Babe Dahlgren, the man who played first following Lou Gehrig for the Yankees. 44 is a eight. That's going to be a ground out to third base. Five to three. We go to the bottom of the first and no score. Fast leadoff hitter Billy Werber leads off for the Cincinnati Reds. Here's the pitch from Claude Pissot. He will give up a walk. Speed on first base. Werber has an 11 in the first column. Meaning, probably start the runner. Hit and run play is on. Here goes Werber. 24 is a 29 to Mike McCormick. And ground ball to the pitcher. Where goes the second? One away. Here is Frank McCormick. 52 is a 27. That's going to be a off feeling column two for Chicago. Five to three, the runner holds. Cincinnati is a field in column one, Chicago two. And with two outs, that brings up the line drive hitting Ernie Lombardi, the catcher. 24 is a fly out to the left field. We go to the bottom, top of the second. There is no score. Pitcher Bucky Walters of the Cincinnati Reds started out his baseball life as a pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies and didn't do well. So they moved him to third base, and he hit pretty well at third base. But his throws over to first were troublesome, and there was so much movement on his ball. Uh, Philly ran short of pitchers, so Jimmy Wilson uh, moved Walters back to the pitcher's mound to fill a need there, and he did pretty well this time around as a pitcher. Here is Walters, and then eventually as a red, Became about the best pitcher in baseball in the 19, at least the early, late 30s and early 40s. Here is Dominique D'Alessandro in the top of the second. 51 is a single for D'Alessandro. Clyde McCullough, the catcher. 16 is a fielder's choice. Ball was hit to the shortstop Sturgeon, or excuse me, the shortstop Eddie used. And he went the short way to second. So McCullough is the runner now with average speed at first base and one out. Not, okay, wait a minute. Sturgeon did not make that play. He's coming up the bat. <laughs> um, yeah, Eust made the play. Here's the pitch to Sturgeon. 54 is a fly out to right field. Two down. And the pitcher, Club Passo. 44 is a eight against the B with the runner on first. It's going to be a ground out to the Cincinnati third baseman, Billy Werber. We go to the bottom of the second, no score. Here is Harry Kraft for the Cincinnati Reds. 
33 is a hit column roll. Had 10 homers in 41. 36 is a double for Harry Kraft. James Gleason out of Kansas City, Missouri. Two thirty-three hitter. You got Fry and use after him. He might sacrifice. Here's the pitch. Twenty-five is going to be a nine, and oh, safe on the fielder's play choice. They try to get the runner at third, but fail. So the Reds are going to have runners at first and third. Nobody out. Gleason's a fast runner, E27 stealing. Lonnie Fry, the batter. All right, here's Lonnie Fry. Here's the pitch. 1 3 is a 14. That is going to be a walk filling the bases. And Clapasso is in a heap of trouble. Eddie used. Eddie Hughes succeeded 100 RBI six times in his career. Can he put a quarter in a merry-go-round? Here's the pitch. 63 is a fly ball. Uh, feeling column two. Not deep enough to center field. And one out with the pitcher coming to bat. Bucky Walters. Not a bad hitting pitcher, though. Infield's playing back for a double play. Here's the pitch. 1-5 is a 9 against grade B. Single over first. That is going to be um, one base advance. Everybody moves up 90 feet, and the Reds score. It is Cincinnati 1, Chicago nothing. So we got Walters at first, Fry at second, and Gleason at third. And we go to the top of the order for Billy Warber. Still the infield is back for Chicago. 31 is a 14. Two balls and no strikes. That's all has the Z modifier. 24 is a fly ball to uh, left field. And the runner will tag up and score. RBI for Werber. First and second now. Two to nothing, Cincinnati, and two outs. Here is Mike McCormick. Not a lot of power, but does hit for average. And I dropped the dice on the floor. There we go. 52 is ground ball to. Third base, five to three. We go to the top of the third, two to nothing, Cincinnati. Here is Phil Cavaretta for the Cubs. 65 is going to be a ground out to first base, unassisted. One away. In my other book, that's a pop out to the catcher, um, but I'm using the updated Apple book today. Here is Stringer. 36 is a strikeout. He has a Y modifier. Two quick outs for the Cubs. Stan Hack. Hard man to strike out in 1935. He had 311 with a total of 17 strikeouts. 55 is a single for Stan Hack. And Hack is two for two. Swish Nicholson. Power hitter. 1 6 is a 28. That's going to be a ground out to the shortstop who goes to second base for the 
Easier out? Well, the bottom of the third, two to nothing in Cincinnati. Frank McCormick leads off for the Reds. He was uh, the 1940 National League MVP as the Reds won the pennant in 1940. 1-1 is a hit column roll. Actually won the World Series too. 62 is a double for McCor Frank McCormick. Ernie Lombardi. Fifty six is a fly ball to left field. One away. There's Phil Cavaretta playing left field. There's Harry Kraft comes to bat. Forty five is going to be a base on balls. First and second. Jimmy Gleason. 46 is a roller back to Walters. He throws the shortstop for one over to first. It's one, six, three, double play. We go to the fourth inning, two nothing Cincinnati. Big dog run leads off for the Cubs. 41 is a ground ball to the shortstop. Eddie used one down. Dominic D'Alessandro. 56 is a ground ball back to the pitcher. Two outs. Clyde McCullough, the catcher. He is 0 for 1. 23 is a rollout to the second baseman. Cubs are down, one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the fourth, two to nothing. Cincinnati leads Chicago. Clop Soul will be working the bottom of the Reds order. Lonnie Frey, Eddie Houston, Becky Walter. 34 is a fly ball to D'Alessandro in center field. One down. Uh, let's see. Eddie Houston is the batter. 65 is a ground out to first base, unassisted, two away. And Bucky Walters. 50. It's a double for the pitcher, Bucky Walters, and he is two for two. So he was a good hitter. And he is showing that today in scoring position for Billy Werber. 42 is a 39. That's going to be burnt out stealing. So we're going to um, All right, he's an end steal, so Werber never stole, so we're going to ignore that. Because no, normally we're using basic kappa, but we use the master symbols for um, stealing. And the uh, on the stealing ends is never. So we'll re-roll. 52 is a... Ground out, or yeah, ground out to the third baseman. Five to three. We go to the top of the fifth inning. It's two nothing Cincinnati. All right, Bobby Sturgeon leads off for the Cubs. Twenty four is a ground ball back to Bucky Walters, who throws over to first base. Frank McCormick, one down. The pitcher Claude Passau. Rolled out the third is first time out. 53 is a 21. That's going to be a single down the right field line. So amongst the pitchers, we they are the pitchers today are three for four. Phil Cavaretta. 
Passo as an average speed. 54 is a fly out to right field. Runners hold. Two outs. And loose stringer. 55 is a 8. It's going to be a ground out to third base. 5 to 3, we go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 2 nothing Reds. Myron Mike McCormick. 31 is a single for Myron Mike McCormick. He played on the 1948 Boston Braves National League Champions. Here is Frank McCormick. 56 is a pop out to the Chicago shortstop, Bobby Sturgeon, one white. Ernie Lombardi, nicknamed Schnoz. 62 is a fly ball to left field, two down. Harry Kraft. 34 is a fly ball to center field. Three outs and we go to the six, two nothing Reds. In the six, Bucky Walters will get the heart of the Chicago order. Stan Hack, Bill Nicholson, and Babe Dahlgren. Here's a pitch to Hack. 36 is a pop out to the Cincinnati third baseman, Billy Werber. Bill Nicholson. There's a five against a, a grade B pitcher. That's going to be a double over first base. Slow runner. I think we'll play it normal on the base pass, though. Here's Dahlgren. 1-4 is going to be a fly at the left field. Two down. Cubs have not had many runners in scoring position. He is only the second one to get, get the second. Stringer got there in the first. Here's the pitch to D'Alessandro. 25 is a ground out to the pitcher. Go to the bottom of the sixth, Cincinnati two and Chicago nothing. Four-time Chicago All-Star Klopp has settled down since the second inning when he gave up two runs. Nothing since. Here's the pitch to Jimmy Gleason. 51 is a walk to Gleason. E27 Steeler has to be two outs. Or after sixth after sixth any outs. Might steal. He is E27. Move to first for Presso is one. The throwing arm for the catcher is a plus one. So E25. 11 through 51, he'd be safe. Should I intend to go? And he does. Monty Frey is the batter. 11 through 51, he'll be safe. 25, he is safe. <clears throat> so a rare stolen base in this 1941 tournament. When we did a dead ball tournament, they were, they were running all over the place. No outs, runner in scoring position to Lonnie Fry. He might sacrifice. He does. 33, too bad. That would have been a hit call and roll. So with the sacrifice, okay, um, we're on second. Get the re-roll. 21 is a 6 out of 1st, 5 to 4, runner goes to 3rd. 
So a sacrifice is successful. The decision not too successful, but there's one out. Runner on third. Cubs will play the infield in and pitch to Eddie Eust. 24 is a 30. That's going to be a fly out the left. The runner tags and will score. Sacrifice fly to left field by Eddie Eust. Makes it 3 to nothing. Cincinnati. Two outs. Here's Bucky Walters. Thought about walking use, but Walters is a decent hitter, and he is also two for two today. Here's the pitch to Walters. 56 is a 34. That's going to be a pop out to the shortstop. We go to the seventh. The Red Stack on another run. It's three to nothing, Cincinnati. Clyde McCullough leads off for the Chicago Cubs. He is 0 for 2. He's not now. That's a hit and call and roll. 24 is a double for Clyde McCullough. Bobby Sturgeon. Thirty-three is a single, and McCullough will score. Putting the Cubs on the board is three to one, Cincinnati. Still no outs. Here's the pitcher, Clyde, Clyde Passeau. Okay, the Cubs are going to pinch hit for Passeau, and the pitcher is Charlie Gilbert. Uh, Forrest personnel is warming up in the bullpen for Chicago. He'll come in and pitch the bottom of the seventh inning. Bucky Walters here is ready to pitch. Here we go, 62. There's going to be a fly out to the Cincinnati right fielder, Myron McCormick, for the first out. Phil Cavaretta. Hit column roll. 1-1. One, one, that's a drive. It might be the outfielder is back to the wall, and he looks up, and it is out of here. Phil Cavaretta has just tied the score for the Chicago Cubs with a two-run home run, driving in Sturgeon. It is 3-3 three to three here in the seventh inning. Lou Stringer. 43 is a ground ball back to Bucky Walters. Two outs. But the damage has been done. The game is tied. Stan Hack. 35 is going to be a base hit for Stan Hack. And he is 3 for 4. And that is the fourth hit in the inning. Bill Swish Nicholson. 6-6 six, six roll. That could be. That is out of here. Nicholson puts the Cubs on top. Five to three. Hack crosses the plate. Nicholson crosses. And we're just falling apart. That means Bucky Walters' pitching grade will go down to a C. And um, timeout. There'll be a new pitcher for Cincinnati. That's James Turner. Comes on here with two outs in the seventh inning. But after the Cubs have scored five runs in the seventh. Here is the pitch to Turner, or from, from Turner to Dahlgren. 1-3 is a base on balls. And that will mean that the Cubs will be batting around here in the seventh inning. Dominic D'Alessandro. 34 is a fly out to center field. So we go to the bottom of the seventh. The Cubs score five runs on five hits, home runs by Phil Cavaretta and Swish Nicholson. Chicago five, Cincinnati three. Forrest Pressmill will, will be the pitcher for Chicago. He's a grade C pitcher, Y modifier. Top of the order for the Reds, Billy Werber. Run four is a fly ball to Phil Cavaretta in left field, one away. Myron McCormick. 55 is a base hit. 
two for four for McCormick. Average speed of first, Buck McCormick. Let's see, 25 is going to be a 4-6-3 double play. We go to the eighth, 5-3, Chicago. Clyde McCullough leads off against Jim Turner. 64 is a swing and a miss for strike three. That is only the third strikeout by a Cubs hitter. Bobby Sturgeon. And as far as that goes, none of the Reds have struck out in this game. 65 is a ground out to first base, unassisted. Two away, and the pitcher, Presnell, will bat. 51 is a 36 ball. 43 is a ground ball back to Turner. Go to the bottom of the eighth, five to three, Chicago. Ernie Lombardi, a 306 career hitter for the Reds, will lead off for the Reds' eighth. He was a National League All Star from the 1936 season through the 1941 season. Here's the pitch from Presnell. 1 1 roll. Hit calm. 1 5 is a drive. It could be. And it is out of here. Cincinnati is fighting back. It is 5 to 4. Chicago, as Ernie Lombardi will touch them all. Harry Kraft. Forty-one is a ground out to the Chicago shortstop Bobby Sturgeon. Jimmy Gleason. The walk. Fast runner at first and Lonnie Fry, Fry up the bat. Lonnie Frey grew up uh, in poor circumstances during the Depression. Uh, actually took a job after getting out of grammar school. And then the Depression took his job. He decided he would try baseball and was able to play well enough to get a minor league contract. And he advanced from there. Here's the pitch to Lonnie Frey. 26. There's a 27. That's going to be a Five to four, fielder's choice. Two outs. And now Fry is the runner at first. D25 Steeler. And he used the batter. When four is a fly out to left field. We go to the ninth. Reds get one run closer. It's five to four, Chicago. Okay, Phil Cavaretta leads off for the Cubs in 1935. He's a 19-year-old first baseman. And during that season, he put together a 21-game hitting streak. Here's the pitch to Cavaretta. 51 is a pop-out to the Cincinnati third baseman, Billy Werber. One down. Lou Stringer. One for four in the game, this game. 54 is a fly out to Myra McCormick in right field. Stan Hack. Stan Hack has three for four, three singles. 6-6 six, six roll, that's a hit column roll. 61 is going to be a two base hit for Stan Hack, and he is four for five on the day. So they got the run in scoring position, can extend their lead with something from Bill Nicholson here. Okay, since I is a very right-handed team, Rose, I'd look to bring in a left-hander to get the one great bump up with two outs here in the ninth for Nicholson, but nobody in the bullpen. And X, as far as that goes, since I has hitters on the bench, there's only a couple of left-handed hitters. So very right-handed team. Here's a pitch to Bill Nicholson. 51 is a 
9, that's going to be a ground out to the first baseman and then assisted. So we go to the bottom of the ninth, 5-4 to four Chicago. To pitch the ninth inning for the Chicago Cubs, Jacob, Jake Moody, will be brought in. He is a grade B pitcher, no modifiers. And pitch inning for the pitcher for Cincinnati is Eddie Mongoose Lucan. 5-4 to four Cubs. Here's a chance for the Reds. Let's see what can happen. Here's the pitch. 36 is a pop out to the Chicago second baseman, Lou Stringer. One away. Top of the order. And Billy Werber. 32 is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman Stringer. Four to three, there's two outs. And Myron Mike McCormick, Red's last hope. Here's the pitch from Moody. 24 is going to be a ground ball back to the pitcher. Over to first, and that's your ball game. The final score of the Chicago Cubs, five, and the Cincinnati Reds, four. We'll be back with the wrap-up. Okay, in this game, the Chicago Cubs uh, scored five runs on 12 hits, no errors. Cincinnati Reds scored four runs on seven hits and no errors. The winning pitcher was Claude Passeau, six in innings pitched, three earned runs. Not Passeau. Presnell was the winning pitcher. Uh, two innings pitched, one run surrendered. Jacob Moody got the save. Uh, Bucky Walters, a loser, six and two-thirds, five innings, five runs uh, surrendered. The stars of the game for the Chicago Cubs, uh, Stan Hack, went four for him, had a double, three singles. And Bill Nicholson, who hit the second big two-run home run in that seventh inning following Cavaretta's two-run shot, and Nicholson went two for five. So let's call Nicholson. I don't have a, happen to have a card handy on him. But uh, here's Cabaretta and Stan Heck. So the Chicago Cubs will advance to the National League Winners Division and bracket. So Chicago will take on the winner of the St. Louis-Boston game. And Cincinnati goes down to the loser's bracket where they will take, out, take on the loser of the St. Louis-Boston game. Our next game will be against, uh, between Chicago and St. Louis, the White Sox hosting the St. Louis Browns over in the American League. That'll do it for today. The Chicago Cubs run, run the W up the flagpole. Thanks for watching. And please join us again. This is Apple Bryan with Apple Baseball Classics saying good night and God bless.